Well, good afternoon, everybody. Darren Saul here, your host of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast, episode 117 for Friday afternoon. And it's going to be a fantastic one just before the weekend. I have Scout Smith O'Leary here in the studio. How are you, Scout? I'm great. Thanks, Darren. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. I'm f- I can't wait to get into what we're going to be talking about. And for everybody out there who's wondering, we're talking about modern love myth busting with the love expert, Scout Smith O'Leary. Is there a one for everybody? Is love dead? Is being completely codependent romantic? Will, con- will love conquer all? Are you afraid of commitment? Do dating apps work? Once we marry or shack up, is it done and dusted? These are just a few of the questions we're going to be chatting about today. So stay tuned. And Scout Smith O'Leary is the CEO and founder of School of Connection in Sydney. She is better known as the love expert. Scout helps people find love and build genuine, strong and healthy romantic relationships. So Scout, welcome to the show. Thank you, Darren. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. (laughs) I am so excited. What a great discussion for Friday afternoon. Oh, I know it. (laughs) (laughs) So, Scout, tell us a bit about your background. How did you end up getting into this line of work? Okay, this is so interesting. Um, Honestly, Darren, from a young age, I just was observing a lot, like my parents, friends, family, and people would say these words, I love you, I care about you. And then their actions were just not in alignment whatsoever. And I was like, that's really weird. That's a weird expression of love. And I just, I guess now I, I know it to be dysfunctional relationships, but I was like, yeah. these people are just very strange in the way that they relate and just not very pleasant. Um, and then I grew up, I kind of jumped in the dating arena and then, you know, had these experiences of falling in love, breaking up, getting dumped, yeah, yeah. <laughs> having, having all of those chemicals just like blind you, yeah, you yeah. know, your dopamine, your oxytocin, your serotonin. And you're like, oh my God, I would jump across <laughs> the world for you. I'd take a bullet for you. And then, <laughs> and then they're like, oh, sorry, I don't want to be with you anymore. Oh, and you're like, oh, my life is over. <laughs> and I just thought like the behaviors that, that humans exhibit when they're in love and, yep. and the pain, the highs and the lows, the roller coasters. I was like, it's crazy. Yep. Wow. Like this is, this is big stuff. Yep. Um, and it can, it can really make someone's life this, this heaven on earth, or yep. it can really bring them to, to the edge of their existence in a dark yep. way. So true. Um, and I thought, wow, I, I'm so passionate and fascinated by this subject and I really feel like my uh, drive and purpose in this life is to help minimize that suffering and bring as much joy to people's lives as possible through helping them cultivate not just happy but healthy romantic relationships. Nice. I like that. That's so cool. And <laughs> it's so interesting, you know, when you were saying all that, I'm thinking to myself, you know, like the courting phase of a relationship is when you feel all those emotions and all the the chemicals are flying through your body and a lot of people get swept up in that, but it's not really an indication of the future relationship or even compatibility. You know, it's a short term drug in a way and people have to realize that and understand what, you know, the different phases of the courting process, I suppose, but we're going to get into it down the track. Absolutely. um, So, I mean, in terms of, you know, love and, relationships these days compared to the old days or just call it the old days in inverted commas i mean what has anything changed or do we think about them in the same way or is it just the way we access our partners are different that's a great question and i'd start by saying you know the biggest thing that's happened to love and dating is the emergence of technology and really specifically the internet and we've we've moved from dating online and websites into apps. Yeah. Like today, it's all about Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, okay, Cupid, Plenty of Fish. Like <laughs> there's, there's so many out there and they, new ones keep popping up. It's crazy. And how do you even keep track? How do you keep track? I don't know. Um, but I guess the thing is, 
it's the appeal is so great because from the sofa we can download it we can take a couple of selfies type of a quick bio or not yep. and then bang you've got mass exposure you've got literally unlimited potential partners um, but the problem the greatest problem that i see with this is that those applications are built to be addictive yep. you're meant to stay on them to keep swiping yep. and people don't really stop and take time to to get to know the people that they match with so and true. so true and there's another kind of shadow side of the app is that it allows us to present a version of self you know we're selective with the image that we project and we can text anybody any stranger and there's no accountability to yep. what we say and who we are and the congruence. So and then we can ghost, we can ghost each other just as quickly as that. Gone. And they're like, eh, nah, Gone. greener grass, eh, nah. <laughs> or like even, even just courtesy, like yep. it's, and I've done plenty of rounds on these apps um, and listened to a lot of my friends and, and just basic human courtesy sure. um, is yeah. lost. And uh, a lot of people have had the experience of being catfished. Yeah. So, what's, what's catfish? What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Catfish. I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> it's when a person might put up a profile picture where they were five, 10 kilos lighter or younger. Uh -huh. And um, you go, or they great lighting, great makeup. They again, projecting this image, you go meet them in person and then your gut kind of drops and like, Oh shit. Uh, like yeah. you're, Again, and it sets the tone for deception before yep. you even opened your mouth. So interesting. And something I heard the other day as well is what one of the trends, I can't remember what I was listening to, also something along these lines. And one of the trends for people on dating apps is they tend to stockpile their matches for a little while <laughs> and they don't actually engage in any conversation. They just kind of stockpile their matches, 5, 10, 15, and then maybe they just start writing back to people. To me, that's insane. Like, how, like, it might be a week before you even say hello to somebody that's just matched you. It doesn't make sense. Well, and this is the thing again, when we think about how the apps were built and the purpose they were built for, just as the pokies were built to give us these baby yeah. dopamine rushes, exactly. the match and the ping is again triggering <laughs> release. We go, oh yes, somebody finds me attractive. Oh yeah. yes. Oh yes, no, I want more. Let's have another one. <laughs> and then you just we we crave that that chemical yep. rush. Yep. Um, and it's you know coffee, chocolate, alcohol, cocaine. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> what happens? You know, neurologically upstairs, it's all the same. Yeah, so true. Um, so, true. so you're right. The stockpiling it becomes about us accessing that that elevated emotion rather than engaging the person on the other side of the phone. Yeah, and this whole becomes one big game. You know, but we don't know really how serious people are behind the scenes. But I want to, before we get into the apps, I want to just take a step back and talk about, you know, relationships and, and uh, love and dating in general. So, I mean, is there, you know, in the old days, there was this notion of, you know, your soulmate or the one for you, you know, true love. Is that still, do we still believe in that? Or has, have science said that that's, that's not what we should be thinking anymore? Or what, what's your take on that? Yeah, look, so I, I'm divided. I'm very romantic, but I'm also very pragmatic. And my friend and I at 17, we crunched the numbers <laughs> of like meeting our soulmate in our age group, in our geographic, you know, yep, location. Yep. And uh, the odds were poor. <laughs> 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 but no, I think uh, absolutely the one is a myth um, because we're creatures who move and we grow and we evolve yeah. and it's a it's a huge expectation to have that we would have one mate one person with whom we were completely compatible yeah yeah and compatible over a lifespan that's a good point because we, you know a lot of the times people grow in different ways in different directions you can't avoid that and and absolutely we've doubled our life expectancy in the last hundred years that's true too so to, to ask for 80, 85 years of compatibility or 60, yeah, let's yeah. say, um, and considering all of the things that life throws at us, all of the curveballs, all of the challenges, the identity transformations and evolutions, yep. it's, it's almost impossible and I'd say highly unrealistic, but 
I won't leave our viewers disappointed. <laughs> I would say that a new notion that's coming in and that I am very um, favorable towards is the idea of there are lots of the ones. I like that. Yeah. There are so many beautiful potential partners and it's something that we understand with platonic connections. Yeah. 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 We understand that we have different friends in our lives and we might go surfing with one group. We might have philosophical discussions and debates with another yeah. and that they bring out different parts of us and excite different elements of who we are. Um, but it's, it's insane. If I said to you, Darren, choose one friend, that's it. No more friends for you. It's so true. Yep. <laughs> You'd be like, um, no, I yeah. like all my friends. Exactly. Yep. So true. Fascinating. And you know, I think, as you say, the world is changing, life expectancy is changing, um, our behavior is changing, and we have to start evolving in the way we think about this as well, I suppose. That, and that's it. it. Everything else in the world has been going through its own evolution. Mm. Love and relationships and marriage, we're still a bit stuck in that kind of, yeah. you know, last, in that last century. Horse and of carriage people. time, you know, when the guy was very chivalrous and romantic and you know, took the hat off and all this kind of stuff, you know, and that's all great. But I suppose, as you say, it might be, we might have to think about multiple soulmates or multiple partners in our lifetime as opposed to just one. But uh, Absolutely. And, and even, you know, look at travel, mm. look at how much that has become accessible to everyday people, yep. you know, in the last 50 years and, and the logistics of that, in terms of love and relationships, if somebody gets transferred overseas for work or we just move cities yep. and long distance comes into the question, but then we're also humans. We need touch. We need connection, Definitely. you know, intimacy of all sorts. Yep. So true. And COVID has you know, shown us how much we need that as well. <sighs> Absolutely. Yeah, in this time. Absolutely. And so in other words, and you know that the theory of codependency, and, you know, mm. that's probably changed as well then. People are becoming more independent or they are more independent and they might not need that codependency as much. Well, it's, it's such an interesting topic, isn't it? Because it wasn't that long ago that like women didn't have the right to vote or own property or yeah. make their own money. And so marriage was essential for survival. Um, we didn't have any options. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we had to be, but as we're seeing, and this is all quite recent stuff, like females have all these opportunities with their own financial independence, living their life. And so the idea of this, this codependent relationship, now it's just purely emotional. So true. Um, yeah. It's not financial. It's, not, it's, it's emotional and physical, not really financial. Yeah. Exactly. And so we're still kind of slow to update. Well, what do we want relationship dynamics to look like now that we're two independent people? Yeah. And I don't have to live with you. I don't need you for a credit card. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like things yeah. like that. But it's, yeah, so true. It's, it's slow to catch up on the emotional side. So true. But I do think that, you know, it's still, I think there's still a place for chivalry on the male yes. side anyway. I think even though, you know, that's the case and we're all very independent men and women, I think there's still a nice thing to be said about chivalry and a man you know, opening up the door for a woman, not because of, you know, he's sexist or chauvinistic, just because it's just a nice uh, chivalrous gesture. So, you know, no one, nobody scold me on this. <laughs> but, um, I think it's just, there's something to be said about good old fashioned, you know, chivalry and respect in a way. And, you know, in, from that, we can take a lot from the, those times from that point of view. I, I'm a hundred percent with you. And I, I always feel like it's such a kind, um, experience to be on the receiving end of yeah. and I, I'm just as happy to open the door for you know my partner um, but it's you know I'd, I'd really like to to see people being a bit less reactionary to that action like oh my god what are you you know yeah, some kind god, of I can open my own door thank you yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah like re reactionary <laughs> feminism like it, yeah. it doesn't really help the kind like I would say the kindness of humans in that intention. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, so true, um, so true. And what about you know that saying, "Love will conquer all." What's your take on that? Oh God, it's so mighty and grand, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's just not true. <laughs> um, and look, it's 
People, we love having things to hold on to and really strong ideas. And it's, it's so deeply romantic and it's used in, in film to carry yeah. plot and in, in Disney to carry fairy tale. Yeah. Um, but anybody who's done a few rounds of real life yeah. um, <laughs> understands that there's, we're, we're much more complex and we have a lot of needs, emotional, psychological, yeah. intellectual. And, and baggage, we have a lot of baggage. Thank you, baggage. <laughs> like, yep. and, and even to the point where like, we can't necessarily, we don't agree on what love is. There's, yeah. You can ask anybody, what's love to you? What's love to you? And they could rattle off something completely different. That's a good point, yeah. And so for something that's so subjective and also fleeting, because people who have been in relationships, a lot of us will know one person will have claimed to love you and then they might turn around and leave. They might walk out. They might sleep with somebody else. They might betray you financially. Yep. And then you're like, well, well, hold on. You said you loved me and then you did this. So now you've, you've either acted in a way that's different to what you said or you've betrayed me or you've, you've tainted my understanding of love. And this yep. is the most dangerous one is when you, you taint someone's understanding of love and then they retract from it completely. Ooh, and they run away and, and I suppose never engage again because they don't want to face the fact that maybe their definition of love is false or is uh, tainted in a way. Absolutely. And, and it's fair that you would want to protect yourself after experiencing that pain. But, and this is one of the things that I, I struggle with, with listening to stories is that once people get burned, in yeah. relationships, it's very hard for them to trust again, yeah. but it also hinders their capacity to develop connections and relationships. Um, and they end up experiencing a lot of sadness and loneliness. So true. Yeah. So one of my missions with, with School of Connection is helping people rebuild that sense of trust, helping them communicate effectively so that nobody has to act in a way that's betraying or receive any actions that will feel like betrayal gotcha. Gotcha. because we don't have a breakup school right but people were so bad at leaving relationships yeah and we get to the <laughs> point where we just like we run away we don't communicate we communicate yeah. violently or um the message on, t on facebook instead of making a phone call or whatever. <laughs> That status change, you know, single or single. really like petty, childish ways. Yeah, and you can really hurt people. Yeah. And that's, that hurt is what creates the baggage. So true. Wow. And so if we were just a bit more mature, a bit more educated in how we communicate, we could honestly minimize the pain where people would be saying, yeah. oh, yeah, look, me and Tom, we broke up. It was hard, but it was done in a respectful way. Yeah, yeah. Not like yeah. he just packed up and left, didn't even leave a note. So true. Like mature and, you know, compassionate is, is so important because, you know, it might affect the way we think about love in general. And it'll be better for everybody if we all act, you know, with some compassion and with some maturity, when, particularly when we break up. And, and that's it. And I... I really want to encourage people to act in that way because as you said, if somebody experiences a trauma like that and then they generalize for their future, men, all men are X, Y, Z, all women are, that, you know what I mean. <laughs> like Fill in the blanks. Yeah. Exactly. Tommy slept with Jenny across the street. Now all men are cheaters or yeah. all men are liars and we yeah. perpetuate this this idea that's just, A, it's just not true. Yep. B, you ruin your chances with other good men because they don't want to be with somebody who believes that. Yep. Um, it's just not going to resonate. And so yep. you, you ruin your own future, in a sense, your opportunities. So true. And what about um, commitment in this modern world? You know, do you think people are scared to commit much more than they used to? Um, you know, the world's changed. It's a, as we said, it's more independent, it's fast paced, there's more opportunities, we meet more people. Are we, are we commitment phobes or what? <laughs> commitment phobes. Look, it has gotten more challenging because we do have this greener grass yeah. with 
people readily available to date us, have sex with us in an instant, in a swipe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, well, we know marriage is on the decline and divorce rates have been steadily increasing. Um, so something's not quite working out, translating into, into long-term relationships. Do we fear commitment? I think nowadays we're afraid of committing to something that we don't want. Yeah. So it's, it's not commitment itself, but let's say, let's use marriage as an example or long-term um, monogamy. There is a, an essentially invisible handbook that comes with that of you're allowed to do X, Y, Z, you're not allowed to do X, Y, Z. And uh, there are some pretty big demands on a person if you, if you do commit to that. Um, and there's no room for negotiation True. in terms of, I mean, you might be happily married for five, 10, 15, 20 years, but then one day you, you meet someone and, oh my God, you feel a connection or you feel a spark or a chemistry. Yeah. And maybe you don't even know what you want. Maybe you don't even know what it is, but, but there's possibility and there's excitement and there's yeah. thrill and there's a bit of passion and desire and nothing might be wrong with your marriage. Marriage is great, but, but we're still human. We're still That's curious. Right. We still love new. We're adventurous. That's right. And um, I think cancelling all possibility is, is a very hard pill to swallow these days. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, yep, so sense. I think an alternative to that is, is a conversation. Or well, I would encourage all people going into relationships now to negotiate their terms and conditions. That's um, I like that. Really nice, really good point. Because I kind of wanted to flip it the other way. Like we might not be, oh. yeah, no, like we might not be that, commitment phobic but our definition of commitment has changed because the world around us has taught us that we can exchange things really easily we can send things back really easily so the way we think about relationships might be the same it's not working let's just find another one you know instead of knowing commitment the definition of commitment is commitment yeah and that's that's so interesting because there is this kind of consumer culture and disposability mm. and and I feel that when people, when things aren't going well or perfectly or as you imagined, it's just, oh, well, you're not good enough, on yeah, to the next. Let's go. What, what else can I find? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the illusion of the app is that there is always more yeah. readily available. But I think, again, one of the greatest myths is that relationships just happen and they self-sustain. And uh, no, you have to work for them. Absolutely. And, and it should be good work. It should be meaningful labor. Yep. Um, but again, I, I always use the word build. You build a relationship. Beautiful. I love that. It's, exactly. it's a, a mutual and, commitment. And it's the journey of, you know, the, courting, the courtship process and everything else that happens. It's not just swipe right, bang, let's have a chat and that's it, you know. That's, there's a whole journey involved in that. So anyway, let's get into apps. Okay, okay. Here we go. My favorite subject. I mean, I don't love apps. I go on the apps. I go off the apps. I, I go on and say, oh, after two weeks, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm doing garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I go back on again. Then I go off again. So it just doesn't work for me. And I still keep going back on. But what, so what's your take on the apps? What are people saying about apps? Okay. My personal take is that apps are a platform, right? They're a technology. Yeah. And probably across the board, I'd say this, that if you use the tech, if you use the interface in a particular way with a particular intention, it can have wonderful uh, impacts for your life. Right. So I would say I have a criteria when I go on yep. and you'll absolutely laugh that <laughs> let's say Tinder, I'm yep. quite familiar with Tinder. Uh, men need to be wearing t-shirts yeah, that's good. The bat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they need to be, which you'd be surprised how many it weeds out. That's hilarious. Um, all right, they need to be smiling in at least one photo because yeah. I, I need to sense that they're human yeah, and so they're true. not pretentious. Yep. Um, and that just, I enjoy smiley people. Um, also, they need to have words in their bio and so not even a sentence, like words. 
And uh, that cuts 99%. Wow. Um, and then I would have a text about some, you know, things that I like to discuss. Okay, I'd have a phone call. And if they can hold a conversation on the phone, I'd happily go meet in public. Perfect. Perfect. But there's a, there's a clear flow of uh, vetting, I'd say. Yep. And then, but my intentions are clear that I'm there to meet people in person. Nice. I like, I like that's a great point. I think it's, it's like saying you just use the app as one very small part of the dating process. You don't replace the whole journey with an app. No, and it's, it's not there for that. And, yeah. but I've, I've actually seen how addictive it is. I've found myself 1 a.m., Swiping, not even actually looking at pictures, just going left. And I'm like, oh God, the algorithm got me. <laughs> but um, yeah, look, like that's my approach and it, it works for me. But if you're just there and just doing this and, and if you're matching and you're not making the time for people, if you're not texting something of substance, if you're not showing up, being present, asking good questions, then it's all pointless. And I'd, I'd question what you were doing there. Yeah, 100%. It's great. Like to me, an app, the app is just a commun another communications channel to allow you to, um, what's the word, execute that courting process or dating process in the real world. It's just another way you access or get exposed to people. That's yeah. it. It's an exposure platform. And, mm -hmm. and if you use it well, if you say who you really are, what your interests are, like, I'm Darren, I'm warm, I'm smiley, I'm funny, I've got a podcast, X, Y, Z, you know, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. some real stuff. And then people will resonate with that. But if you're Darren, Aussie bloke, likes a beer, <laughs> you, you are as generic as the next. <laughs> and I have a picture of me 10 years ago when I had more hair. Then it's really all over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, so yeah. So it's you, just, must have, you must have heard some great stories about apps. <gasps> oh my God. And the people who just, they just go on and then, yeah, getting matched, ghosted, like people uh, will text and then they'll disappear. Or you might, they might think there's something, there's some banter, chemistry, and then yeah. there's nothing. There's yeah. awkward first Absolutely dates. Nothing. And what surprises me is you can go out sometimes to a club or to a bar or to a restaurant. And you might find a group of single girls or guys, but more so girls. And the guys are just hanging around doing their thing because the girls are actually sitting on their phone, on their app, the app. <laughs> while they're sitting in a bar. So what the hell is everybody there for? Well, that's the thing. Like, that's the landscape now. And we're, crazy. We're, we feel safer on the yeah. phone because yeah. there's some kind of distance and buffer. Um, well, also the element of we're addicted. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a game. It's, it doesn't feel real because, yeah. you know, and you can laugh and you can mock people and you can be so picky and, and discriminative. Yeah. Um, and, and we forget that that's a human on the other side of that. That's right. It's not just one picture and, and a couple of words. And, and even if, even if the pictures are pretentious, even if, you know, the, it comes across as uncomfortable or, or whatever, it's still a person. And like, if you're swiping yes and texting them and, and giving them signals that you're interested, I yeah. think it's really unfair to not give people the time of day and just, you know, follow through. 100%. Totally agree. Like, but in terms of, you know, how you work. Let's chat a bit more about how you work with people. So tell us more about the School of Connection and what programs you have to offer and how you work with all of us lovesick human beings. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, I want to spare you guys the headache of dating. <laughs> um, and that's why I started School of Connection Sydney because I felt like, wow, so many single people are out there doing their best to connect, but it's hard. And these, these platforms, these tech platforms are really inorganic and they make us do weird things that we wouldn't really do face to face. Yep. Um, so one of the parts of school of connection is F dating apps, conscious singles events. Oh, cool. Back to old <laughs> so, school. Exactly. Kicking it old school where there's no more like pressure, expectations, awkward dates, no presenting a virtual self. You yep. come, you show up. 
yep. um, kind of like a speed dating, but also doing some group stuff. Also learning some practical skills for relationships of like yep. how to communicate, what your expectations are, what your deal breakers are, what's important to you. So learning about yourself as well and just getting super clear yeah. on who you are, what you want, how to communicate that. Yeah. Um, but in a way that's just like fun and light. And like you said, just old school, like old school. we can't do human relationships via a tech platform. Yeah, Sorry. I totally, I totally agree with you. I think there's just something fundamentally wrong with that. That's, you can't be in bed, like, you know, caressing your phone. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Well, someone might debate that, yeah, but yeah, you can, but anyway. and, 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 and other things like loving your phone, just not, no, it's not so going to cut it. It's so true. Um, and do, you, do you coach people if they want to get better with how they approach the dating scene? Do you coach them as well? Yeah. So another service that I offer is one-on-one private relationship mentoring. And so again, that's, it can cover a range of things. If people have been single for a long time and they don't know how to get in the game, yeah. they're, they're not feeling comfortable or confident. If people have baggage from past relationships, they've been hurt before, they've got trust issues. Um, people have issues from childhood with parents yeah. that have yeah. blocked them. They've had bad role modeling. Exactly. They know they don't want to be like their parents, but they don't know what the other options are. Um, and then, yeah, also when people start out, I, like, I think it's so important when you are in that honeymoon, you can do some really solid foundational groundwork to build up the relationship. Nice. Um, set, so, set the right expectations. Exactly. And if it's clear at the start, it's so easy going forward. But what you don't want is ambiguity at the start and then a year in two years in you're already completely emotionally invested yep. and then you realize oh my god we never talked about xyz okay. and, and now it's a yep. problem so, so yeah one-on-one um is really great for helping people get through that stuff and then we also offer a path to love 16 week course oh boy so this is like, if you're really ready, you've done your rounds with dating relationships and you're like, no, nah, I need to lock this down, get focused, get clarity. It's a combination of group work, workshopping, exercises, plus the one-on-one. -on -one. Nice. So it's one week group work. And then on the off week, you do a one-on-one -on -one session. Yep. And it's, it's mixing self-awareness, psychology relationship tools i love it all yep. of it yep even, so, even even people understanding guys and girls understanding what their role should be in the courting process in the attraction process because a lot of times we don't even know well and you've mentioned it before about bringing up chivalry it's so interesting like post me too movement a lot of men that I've been speaking to are like, I don't know my place. I don't know my role. I don't yeah. know what's appropriate. I don't yeah. know who pays. Yeah. I don't know if I'm being offensive. Yeah. What happens if I touch you on the shoulder? Is that flirting or is, am I going to be slapped with a, a, a lawsuit? You know, you don't know anymore what you can cut do. Yeah. It's men are very much like uh, unsure at the moment. Mm. Um, and it's, it's a great opportunity for women to step up and be proactive in what they want. I, yeah. you know, really discourage that idea of like women should wait and be timid and be approached. Like, no, if you see someone you like, go and talk to them, go and approach right. them. It's, sure. it's 2020. Like, come yeah. on. Like fantastic guys have been going after it for ages. Step up ladies. Yeah. Like, yeah. Us men are the only too um, happy. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and just like having those open lines of communication both yeah. ways. So yeah. like, it's everyone's responsibility, like, and, and also breaking this idea that it's not cool or it's unsexy to talk. Yeah. Like, yeah, I really liked it when you touched me, like, oh, yeah. I like that. You yeah. touched my shoulder or like, oh, look, you know, I'm not feeling it right now. Yeah. But not being uncommunicative and then just like having a bodily reaction and then running home and telling your girlfriends like, Oh my God, I can't believe you touched my shoulder. Like it was so inappropriate. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, it's crazy. And like, you know, and just, just tell the person in a, in a kind, gentle way, no offense, no harm done. Carry on. Yeah. 
but um, 100%. it's quite it's quite rare to find, honestly. It's hundred percent. It's it's like the, the the lines are blurred, and you know it is confusing. So it's great that you have that kind of a service. Yeah, because a lot of people are struggling, and they don't know what they can and can't do, and you know what what is the right way to do things these days. And that's we are moving towards a consent based culture which is it's wonderful yeah. but as we move towards that we need to let go of this kind of letting things happen and letting things flow and expecting a particular narrative or yeah. you know we went on a first date and at the end of the first date this is what's supposed to happen yeah and if it doesn't happen then that's it i'm not going out on date two but that's just silly that's immature it's crazy <laughs> or you know like the, the anxiety that arises with people is like, oh my God, should I text him back? Should I text him yeah. first? How many minutes after the first date yeah. when I get home? And, like, and even, I, and even in the old days, I remember like guys, you, like, you, you, meet, you go out with somebody for the first date or you, you just take somebody's number. How long should I wait before I make the call? How long should I wait before I follow up? It's just all exhausting. <laughs> it's that mental stress will make yeah. anybody crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, like my advice to that is like, do what you feel. Yeah. If you play a straight bat, if you like them and you want to call them the next day, you want to say, hey, I had a great night. You know, if that gets misconstrued or misinterpreted as, oh my God, he's a psycho, he's too keen, he's yeah, like so too forward. Keen. That's those famous words, too keen. <laughs> no, that's, it's just, yeah. no. If you, if you want to play games, you know, move along. Yeah. If you want to play games and someone ends on the other side likes it, then you've, you've found your match. If you don't want to play games and someone likes the fact that you're so honest and, and showing that you're excited, they like that, you found the right match. So it's really about finding the right people through your behavior rather than fabricating what you should and shouldn't do. And, and that's exactly where I want to see the culture move to both sexes being assertive in how they feel and being mm. communicative and being unafraid of that. Hey, I love that date. I had a great time. I'd like to see you again. Yeah. Bang. And then you can decide either way. You know, I had a great time. Love to see you too next Tuesday done. Or yeah, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't feeling it so much. But best of luck in your dating. Cool. Yep. Love it. Love no it. dramas, no pain. Keep it moving. Actually, <laughs> go, go find someone that you want to be with. Fantastic. Don't waste your time. Don't waste their time. Come yeah. on now. And, and dwelling and analyzing and talking to everybody yeah. about the message and reading the message and analyzing the paragraph. I mean, please, it's exhausting. And that's it. If it's not a hell yes, Move keep on. it moving. I love it, Scout. I love it. I love your approach. So tell us a story. Have you got any great case studies or stories of how you've helped men and a man or a woman and shown them some incredible uh, insights that really led to some happiness? I'd love to hear a story. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. This is really exciting. This one's super fresh, actually. Good. Good. Um, it was somebody, uh, a woman that I went to university with and she was single and like, yeah, I'm just really enjoying my single life. She had a bad breakup the year before and she's like, that's it, not looking. I'm all over the apps. I've got, you know, four yeah. things cooking. Yeah. Like, so, and, all the, and all the apps are going at the same time. And all that kind of stuff. Oh, she was a champion juggler. <laughs> and I said, um, yeah, cool, you know, great. And a couple of months passed by. Oh yeah, I met this guy. We're seeing how it goes. And um, I met him he came to one of my workshops online and I, I got the sense he was really genuine, really solid. Nice. And um, I just said to, to my friend, I said, Hey, that he's, he's an absolute catch, you know, like you might want to tune into that one a bit more. And she was like, Oh, look, yeah, I know, but I'm really enjoying playing the field. I just want to see how it goes. I don't really know. And I'm like, no, no, like you're not listening. Like, <laughs> there's it. real potential there. And then they started dating further. And she actually asked me, she goes, can you come to a picnic with me and my new man so we can talk about some stuff? And it was a, a very informal. Like, is, that, um, is that on the first date? It wasn't the first, but it was about the third. Like okay. it was early. Okay. And, <laughs> and she's like, I'll bring you lots of cheese. I'll pay you in cheese. And, <laughs> and we go and... um. 
they it was so comical they were both very honest they're like i don't really know about this relationship to be honest oh my God. like we just met we've got lots of chemistry but we also don't want to beat around the bush yeah. we're trying to figure out if we can do partnership you know kids eventually and um i just you know guided them talked them through some questions like what do you want where do you see yourself you know, how do you see your relationship developing over time with roles, as we said, you know, wow. when children come in yep. uh, with money, she's from Slovenia, he's from Australia with cultural differences. Yep. So we hashed it out for four hours in the park. Wow. And um, since then, we've been catching up. Well, both of them and myself and my partner, because it's, it's more fun when it's like an awesome yeah. awesome. <laughs> and um, this was in about... I'd say March yeah. and now we're in October and we catch up at least monthly and oh my God, to see the progress wow. from going from both of them, like, I don't know if I want to be with you to love sick, goo goo gaga, can't get their hands off of each other. Like yeah. it's just like, it's so incredible to see the transformation. And basically that was all due to the fact that you helped them open their eyes as to what they actually wanted and what they needed to discuss in terms of their expectation. And that's it. That really candid conversation at the start and, and they went home and explored it further. Sure. But um, literally, this is so funny. It was a month ago. We we're at Thai, Thai restaurant having our double date. And they're, they're looking at each other. And I was like, God, you guys are so in love. Like, just, <laughs> just, just get over yourselves. Already. Yeah, like, but they hadn't said the L word, right? This right. is such a thing in English. Right. And I was like, get over yourselves. Just say it. It's so obvious you're in love. Just say oh, that you love each other. Love and they're, they're just like, <laughs> we can't. And then I found out the next week, like, they'd had a chat. They said, you know, also, Scout thinks it's really obvious that we're in love. And then oh the next day they dropped the album. Oh my God. And I'm just like, so scared to just kind of be themselves. Yeah. And that's, and that, that fear that we have around rejection and then we're not going to be good enough. And, and that's it. Like the world's over. No one's going to love me ever. If this person doesn't accept my love, like yeah. it's stakes are high. Wow. But, um, well yeah. done. Scout, that's sensational. That, absolutely fantastic. I love, I'm sure that you've got so much more to say. And I think we probably go this, we could go on for another two hours easily. We'll have to, maybe have to bring you back in again. Sure. So if the audience uh, wants to hear more from Scout and more about the School of Connection, let us know. We'll bring her back. Um, but if people want to find you, Scout, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, fantastic. So you can visit the website www.schoolofconnectionsydney.com. Also on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, School of Connection Sydney. It's the best ways and nice. you'll find everything up there. Love it. And you'll find all of Scout's programs, her coaching, her dating events coming up. It's all happening for the it School is. of Connection in Sydney. I love it. And now is it only Sydney or other states as well? Yeah, at the moment, we're just Sydney-based. Okay. So okay. I have to stay posted for other locations. Watch this space. Love it. Well done. So, Scout, what would you like to leave us with before we finish up? Any final thoughts? Guys, if you're about to go in or you're single, just be authentic. I love it. And, and wait for somebody to resonate with who you are because you can't get what you want by saying yes to what you don't. I love it. I love that. Be, be ready to, for someone to, and wait for someone to resonate with who you are rather than trying to be someone that you're not. I love that. Yeah. That's so cool. Scout, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. It's been so great. We've learned so much. And I hope the audience has had an, an immense pleasure listening to you today and watching you. And I'm going to put all the links in the show notes for everybody to access. Um, and for everybody out there, I hope you have a fantastic weekend and we'll be back very, very soon for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. Thanks again, Scout. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, guys. <laughs>